You could call Ethan Hawke something of a Gen X renaissance man. He chose to star in offbeat films rather than big budget blockbusters. He's written a couple of novels. He's directed some arty indie films and even started a theatre company. Superstardom, huge Hollywood paydays and awards glory have so far eluded Ethan Hawke, but that seems to be exactly the way he likes it. He grew up in and around New York with a stepfather who believed success was not defined in financial terms. Ethan originally wanted to be a writer until at 14 he was cast alongside River Phoenix in a film called Explorers. Next came his breakthrough film, Dead Poet Society. His ability to play teen angst as the painfully shy and cringing Todd won him a huge teen following. Roles in Alive and White Fang followed. But it wasn't until Ben Stiller's directorial debut, Reality Bites, where he played Winona Ryder's grubby slacker boyfriend with artistic pretensions, that he earned that reputation in real life. Ethan then went on to collaborate for the first time with director Richard Linklater on Before Sunrise, starring as another sensitive student of life. And to date, the pair have collaborated on seven films together, with more in the works. Taking time off to Penny's debut novel, The Hottest State, didn't help Ethan slack a reputation. It was a meditation on 20-something love and angst. Many critics labelled it pretentious posturing. There was also a smattering of positive criticism, and by the time Ethan took the lead in sci-fi blockbuster Gattaca, his profile began to take a more favourable turn. In true Ethan Hawke style, he said yes to the role because he believed it to be an auspicious reflection of society at the time. What's beautiful about this story that he's written is there's all these incredibly complex um, relationships. You know, this uh, this character that Uma plays is kind of uh, just kind of a heightened version of what I think so many people are going through right now all the time about you know this aspiration towards perfection and uh, how frightening that is. And ever the intellectual, Ethan philosophized on the meaning of the film. Certainly the movie's all about class systems and any kind of class system and you're, you know, it's not so far-fetched. You're restrained by what world you're born into and uh, what's far-fetched about the story is what extent you have to go into another world. But, you know, you can look at the statistics about the, you know, the economic class that people are born into right now and the class they die into. I think it's, a, you know, I, I really couldn't say what it was, but I'm sure it's pretty close to, I'm sure it's very high. And yep, it was on the set of this film that Ethan began dating his co-star, Uma Thurman. The pair were seen on red carpets all over the globe and were married the following year with a daughter on the way. That same year, Ethan starred opposite Gwyneth Paltrow and Robert De Niro in an updated adaptation of Great Expectations. And despite mixed reviews, the film heightened Ethan's profile while further establishing him as one of the leading interpreters of sensitive boy artistic angst. In addition to his film work, Hawke has remained active in the theatre. He was artistic director of the New York theatre company Malapart, which he co-founded with a group of actors. He earned some of his best ever reviews as the title character in the modern day adaptation of Hamlet. And then came the big one, Training Day. Hawke played a moralistic rookie cop who meets his match in Denzel Washington. I hope that, um, that the first time you see the movie is a lot like what it was like to first read the script, which is that the, it moves so fast. The script did, for me anyway, uh, it's like a roller coaster ride. The script, uh, I mean, it's one of the most exciting things about the movie is the fact that it all happens in one day. It's just kind of a chain reaction, like firecrackers or something. Um, so that was, I just loved it. I thought it was a great part for Denzel. I was kind of excited to watch him play a, a character this complicated. It's, I think it's just part of this, what's gonna make this movie really special is, I mean, it really is. It's fast, furious, and intense. And it's like, and that's what it's like, the drive arounds that I did with these cops, you just spend a lot of time in a car. And this movie is really kind of daring to like, you are going to experience what it's like to be with these police officers in a day. And we're just moving like a shark through the city, you know? And uh, and these guys are on top of each other. These police officers are just right on top of each other all day long. It was a pretty physical role, which was a big change for Ethan. And when it came time for his character to fight back, he didn't pull any punches, so to speak. He punched me in the mouth. I, I 
I've, I've been, the guy gets beat up so much in this picture. When he finally gets a chance to turn, he was so excited. I still got like bruises all over my arms. He's been snatching me around, punching me, and he punched me straight in the face. But he was, uh, he was so upset about it. He was really upset about it. He went out and bought me a great bottle of wine the next day. I came in, I told him, oh, man, I gotta go to the dentist, man. He was like, oh, God. I'm like, nah, I'm kidding. He's a real good man. I like him a lot. Hanging out with Denzel proved to be quite the experience. You get to go to all these locations, also with Denzel, you know? Um, uh, going to a lot of largely African-American neighborhoods uh, and with, you know, kind of the reigning African-American actor, king of uh, Hollywood, you know, it's fascinating. Um, uh, going there with Snoop, going there with Dre, I mean, it's, uh, I feel like I'm hanging with the Beatles. And while Denzel rightly won the lion's share of critical acclaim when he won the Oscar for Best Actor, Ethan was also recognised with a nomination for Best Supporting Actor. The following years were not great ones for Hawke, who split from wife Uma in 2003 after rumours of infidelity surrounded the couple. First with Ethan and a young model on the set of a film, then allegedly Uma had been getting cosy with director Quentin Tarantino, then Ethan again with the couple's nanny to their two children, Ryan Shawhughes. Despite denials from both parties, Ethan then went on to marry Ryan and to date has two daughters with his former nanny. But back to the art. Roles in Taking Lives, opposite Angelina Jolie, and Before Sunset, the sequel to Before Sunrise, kept Hawke in the spotlight, as did his Tony Award for his return to stage in the Broadway production of The Coast of Utopia. But it was his role in Sidney Lumet's Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, which found Ethan Hawke back in the limelight for all the right reasons. The film saw him play opposite the best of the New York acting scene. Philip Seymour Hoffman and Marissa Tomei, and acting opposite acting legend Albert Finney. Marissa, Phil, and I uh, all run in the same circle, so it, that's been fun. Albert Finney's a legend. Uh, for those people who care about acting, he's, uh, you know, a tremendous force. So it's been fun. I mean, the thing about Sydney that's amazing is how unprecious he is. I mean, he really treats it like a profession, so it's. Uh, he, he demystifies and de-glamorizes it all. It gets very brass tacks. He's a real tradesman, craftsman. Uh, I like that about him. Uh, it's kind of a thrill for me, you know, to be shooting a film in, hot, in a hot New York City summer with Sidney LeMay. It's really, when I think about what I would have dreamt to have done with my life, this is, this is pretty much it. Revered director Sidney Lumet also gave Ethan props when discussing his treatment of his co-stars and crew when Hawke insisted during Marissa Tomei's nude scene that himself and the crew working on the scene all strip off to make Tomei more comfortable. Who said chivalry was dead? This was to be Lumet's last directorial effort and he gave Ethan the highest praise. Really wonderful melodramas in my view are when the either the both the writing and the director, through the talents of the actors, can present you with the history of those characters without ever having to talk about them. So that uh, Philip or Ethan, and so help me, this happened without my, uh, any, my uh, going for it, without making any advance planning of it. They both arrived at scenes in which they're getting rather frantic they're in their houses, and both ran over their beds. They didn't go around the beds, they ran over the beds. I had never asked either of them to do it. They did it totally independent, not only of me, but of each other. Uh, now, of course I, I left it, of, of course it's gonna be in the movie, because that gives you a little bit of the history of two brothers. Ethan's strong performance saw him receive rave reviews and he was back in the big league. Predictable only for being unpredictable, Hawke then followed his success with a turn in the vampire thriller Daybreakers, and once again showed the caliber of actor he was when his commitment to the project saw other highly esteemed actors sign on straight away. Ethan was cast when they uh, proposed the project to me, and that certainly defined it very clearly. Sometimes in a genre movie like this, people are more interested in the effects than the actors. 
but clearly their choice to um, cast Ethan showed that uh, they were interested in a certain uh, level of performing in this production. Uh, working with Ethan was really wonderful. As a human being, he's very gorgeous, very open, generous, a lot of fun to be around. Uh, I loved it. As an actor, author, screenwriter and poet, Ethan Hawke has positioned himself as the Gen X Renaissance man. He continues to chart his own course on both stage and screen, making him one of his generation's most unpredictable and intriguing actors. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie.